For all of you who listen to Submersion and own an Android device, go to the Google Play Store and download the Podcast Republic app. It's a fantastic app that allows you to get all of your favorite podcasts directly on your Android device. I personally use the app and I love it. I can search for the podcast I want to listen to, select it as a favorite, and have it just a click away. Make sure to select Submersion as a favorite so you don't miss any of our new episodes. Again, the app is the Podcast Republic app, available on Android devices. And we are on episode 67! Woo! Woo! Yeah! That's right. Yeah, buddy. And this movie, I didn't even plan on watching. I'm not going to lie. Well, yeah. I had right? to find this last minute. Uh, I was going to say, I thought you were just going to pretend to have watched it. No. No. I did watch it, but origi- I'm going to give a shout out right like now Zach. to a um, another <laughs> movie that I did watch that we'd mentioned in a Rift episode that was actually pretty darn good called Leviathan. You thought it was good? And I was... I was so disappointed when there wasn't a sub in it. We wondered what would happen when that when that inevitably occurred, that we watched a film that actually did not have a submarine in it. And we just said, well, we can't do it. That's a shame. It was destiny, too, because I, I was on vacation, <clears throat> and I was I had given up hope. I thought, okay, well, this I guess this will be the episode I'm not on. I cried myself to sleep that night, and then <laughs> it was a Christmas miracle, because you guys, I woke up, saw a bunch of texts being like, hey, there's no submarine in this movie. I well, bet you were pretty jazzed about that. Uh, I was super jazzed about it. Super, but uh, we stayed jazzed. on theme. We got a we got a pretty mythical monster in this. It's uh, it's not the Leviathan. It's not the Kraken. Although I'm on theme tonight, drinking a little spiced rum. Kraken. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> this guy. Yeah, buddy. This Here we guy. go. But we do have a little saucy uh, mythical monster for you, so don't don't. Uh, well, you you read you read the damn title of the episode when you press play. Don't don't pretend you didn't. That is true. That yeah. is very true. And what is that title though? Do we have to oh. dive first? <laughs> die! 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 There we go. What began as an innocent conversation among friends would soon spiral out of control and later be referred to by future generations as the eighth wonder of the modern world. Mac East Second Floor Studios takes you on the journey of your lifetime as your captains, Alex the Mustard Man, the artist formerly known as Brom, Jamie the Brain, Kyle L. Capitan, and Zach the Backbone present Submersion. Ah. Oh. Love it. Beautiful. Uh, we are we are using some new software, so bear with us tonight, guys. Uh, are we? Ra- rather, we're we've back gone, to we've the gone back. old software. But you're mixing in some new tech there that allows us to listen to our jingles. I am. Jingles, jingles, jingles. 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 Oh, I saw you jinx, jinx uh, Coke jinx. right there. It's your Coke. Oh. Uh, are you guys synced was... up again? <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, this was quite a coincidence, too. You changed it up at the last minute to this film that we're watching. And I had literally just finished reading the book. No way. Yeah. It's true. Intentional? Like, were you like, I know there's this movie out there and I'm pretty sure we're going to do it one day. So I'm just going to read the book because I'm a big old brainiac. Uh, no. <laughs> brainiac. Uh, I, every I gotta mu- get your every opinion. Year, you, do you, did you like 50 shades of gray or 50 shades darker better? Which, which one book or a movie? Both. Uh, I read, I did not read the book of the second one. I thought one, you just said you read it. No, no, no. I was just, I, I was clarifying because I was going to say, I did not read the book Fifty Shades Darker. I read the book Fifty Shades of Grey and it was awful. And then <laughs> the movies are hilarious. So, I mean, they are too fucking funny. They, they were like a <laughs> gift to our website because they, I think they won three years in a row for like our favorite bad movie. That's badmovietwins.com. 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 Wow. Yeah, they're the best. I won't say it. I won't condone it. But no, but mo- this one was, we're watching 2010. Two, it's so hard to remember this title. It's so stupid. 2010 <laughs> colon Moby Dick. Yeah. I Dude, it's not, not to be confused. For that. Yeah, not to be confused with Moby Dick, parentheses, 2010, close parentheses. Because <laughs> right. I tried to watch that and it wanted $3 and it was a TV series. Yeah. Yep, I, <laughs> Seriously? Is I, that why you like we have to pay for this? Yeah. It's like, no, you don't. <laughs> I I almost ended up watching that. That's why I sent a picture. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. You definitely gotta know what you're in for. 
No, but I had, I have every year I have kind of a project that I have for like books I want to read because I'm a big old nerd. Um, and last year was a fantasy series that I had read as a child. That was like what I, I wanted to finish it finally. Robert Jordan's Wheel of Time series. And then this year I was like, I want to read Moby Dick. And so this last month I read Moby Dick and I finished it less than a couple, I mean, like 10 days ago or something. Wow. Good, jo- good job, man. Books yeah. are always, you know. Yeah. There's something. The great, <laughs> the great Herman Melville. Yep. Dude, I thought this so was I, fucking I, Tom I, Clancy. I, no, <laughs> Kyle. Come on. I'll cut in here and okay. say I read the book back in because um, I was told to save this for the podcast. <clears throat> I'm not going to say by who. But in fifth grade, I read the book, Moby Dick, and I did a book project on it. You know one of those shoebox projects? Do you guys ever do those? Oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, a a yeah. diorama, right? Yeah, yeah. So I did that, had the little whale in there and the ship and the, and, and Captain Ahab. And then uh, I walked up there in front of the entire class and was like, I did a project on Moby Dick. And then all the kids are like, <laughs> and the teacher's like, quiet down. And I remember that. Wow. That's good. That's that that touching. Was a great story. fifth grade you read this book that it took Jamie till he was past 30 to do? <laughs> Makes you wonder, doesn't it? You, but yeah. I see, I, I think you must have had like an abridged version or maybe a comic book version, <laughs> maybe a picture book. <laughs> what are we thinking? Oh, here's Moby Dick, the comic. Okay. First that edition. clearly exists. <laughs> <laughs> it better exist. Moby Dick, the hentai. Oh, that's good. the one. That's the yes. one. Yes. That'd be good. That'd be real good. All right. Yeah, <laughs> I just looked it up. That book's 700 pages, Jamie? No. I mean, it's my my version of it was 480 pages or something. I don't know what I just found. Never mind. All right, let's keep going. <laughs> you probably found the large print version for old people. <laughs> Mass market paperback, probably. All right, keep going. All right. Uh, should we... Do you have any do you have any stats about like the people in this and what kind of Oscars it was nominated for and stuff like that, Kyle? <laughs> uh yes, I uh, maybe do some Razzies. Just Doesn't, it's not big enough to get, second. <laughs> to get a Razzie. Come on. I don't think the asylum films can they do not qualify. So low budget. No. Oh damn, there's an Ethan Hawk Moby Dick. That's yeah? another oh, yeah. one I almost watched. <laughs> you should have. Uh, so as we'd mentioned, the movie is called 2010 Moby Dick. It came out in 2012. I'm just kidding. That'd be great. Uh, it <laughs> stars Barry Bostwick as Captain yeah. Ahab. And he is from, you'd recognize him from the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Nope. Spy Hard. Zach, you'd mentioned he was in Spin City. Spin there City. it is. Yeah. There it is. And he won a Golden Globe for War and Remembrance. And mm. the only other person you would even possibly recognize in here is Renee O'Connor. Famous for Xena, Warrior Princess, as Gabrielle, the sidekick. Oh, kicking ass. that's how I, I knew I recognized her. Mm-hmm. Big Xena fan. Are you? No. Hmm. <laughs> I, do, I do recognize her. That, 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 definitely. That and Hercules. Yeah, what's his face on there? Guy that does the disappointed. <laughs> yeah, he was uh, he was Ryan's dad in the OC. Sorbo, Kevin Sorbo or something. Yes, you got yeah. it. Look at that. Just pull that Nailed out of it. my brain. Topical. The ointment. <laughs> Trademark. <laughs> wow. All rights reserved. Patent pending. That's badmovietwins.com. Right. The timer's on. All right. So <laughs> it is. We open. It's November 20th, 1969. All right. And we're 50 miles off of Soviet waters is a question mark because first they say they're 50 miles past Soviet waters and then on the boat they're like we're 50 miles away from Soviet waters we're at like, least they I'm spelled so it right yeah so anyways we're on the USS Akushnet and everyone's like whoa I just read Moby Dick I recognize that name uh, and uh, they are sailing about and they dive under the ice and they're like oh we gotta go real quiet and they, they're searching for enemy submarines because they're in Soviet waters and they're looking around and they're like, oh, shit, there's an unknown target. It must be one of those Soviet submarines. And they start uh, going after it. But Ahab, a young Ahab, who's the, the sonar man, is listening in. He's like, this doesn't sound like it doesn't sound like a submarine. It sounds like emptiness. It sounds like there's just Dude, a void in the water. hold on. What's up? Before this all goes down. I'm talking about the Miller Highland. And they're, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. So they think that there's a Soviet boomer somewhere around. 
and one of the guys comes up. He's like, hey, uh, whoever spots it first gets a case of high life. And I was like, oh, yes. And the guys are super jazzed. They're pumped. And one and Boomer, not to be confused with the Soviet Boomer, but Boomer, who's like the next sitting next to Ahab, is like, I'm getting that beer. And Ahab's like, well, whatever. I'm like a super genius sonar guy. Yeah. He's like, over my dead body. Over my missing and leg. fight it to the death. And Ooh. so uh, they start following it. He's like, there's something there. And they're like, I don't hear anything. And the captain doesn't hear anything. He's like, I don't even know what, what the fuck you're talking about. Ahab, he's like, no, there's emptiness there. It's empty. It's like a void. Let's follow it. So I start following it. And it goes like super duper deep. They're diving like extra super deep. And then and he keeps on saying like, follow it, follow it, follow it. And it goes into a trench, this unknown object. And they're like, okay, we got to pull off. We're not going to follow this thing down into the trench. We're just going to take some pictures of it. We'll let someone else like figure out something about it. They start taking pictures. What's heading towards them, Kyle? A huge effing whale. Uh, and not just any whale, the white whale. It's oh! Moby Dick. Moby Dick. And they hear a, a gigantic roar. It's like, wow. And it goes after Dude, them. Dude, I've never heard a whale roar, but I heard... Zach, have yes. you heard a whale roar before? Yes, I have. It was back when I spent about two years out at sea. Um, it was a hell of a time, you know. Great. Look and forward so, to hearing more about that <laughs> later. <laughs> and so the sub <laughs> is latched onto by the jaws of Moby Dick, and it pushes them out of the ice or whatever and snaps it in half and all oh, kinds of crazy shit. Oh, my God. And Ahab's Dude. there, and he's like real injured. He's sitting there. He looks over. He sees his boomer and his hand has been crushed. And he's like, oh, my God. And then just at that moment, Moby Dick comes back. He sees the eye of Moby Dick. And it pulls half of the submarine away, ripping off his leg. Yeah. It's clean but, off. Dude, It <laughs> you really downplayed how incredible it was because it just grabbed the sub in its mouth, yep. shot through the ice like a bullet. The sub broke in half like a Kit Kat. Like a Kit Kat bar. Snap into a yeah. Kit Kat, our right. sponsor. Snap into a sub. Um, yeah, you can slap into yeah. a Slim Jim, right? And, uh, dude, it was nuts. It was crazy. Yes, it was the best CGI I've ever seen. I think it won the Oscar for that. And mm -hmm. it looks amazing, and the whole movie looks amazing so far. So anyways, we flash forward to present day, presumably 2010, given the title, and Dr. Michelle Herman and her assistant, Bip, they're testing a whale song generator, and they're like, we're going to be the first ones who ever do this, to who attract whales to us using their own song. And so Pip's like, I'm so confused. Why are we in this shitty boat? Is it because the budget of this movie is real low? And she's like, no. She goes, no one believes me. He's like, oh, okay. And they lower this piece of shit equipment into the water, and it starts going, and they just see whales everywhere. It was like whales all over the place. Oh, dude. And they're, they're like, going nuts. Yeah, they're like they're really They're getting excited. in the mood. Mm -hmm. They're gyrating, doing whale stuff. They're like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Like, what wow. the hell? And then something starts. sound, right? Yeah, that is what whales sound like. Like uh, sounded like our Godzilla intro. Oh, Back from Japanese did. movie month. Man, and, that was a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> and then something starts spooking the whales. It starts spooking them, and it comes up, and it's a big old submarine, the USS Pequod, and everyone who's read Moby Dick's like, oh, man, the Pequod, right? Yeah. Yeah, those yeah, of us who I did, remember. We're like, mm -hmm. what a weird name for a sub. Now, Kyle, and, isn't it true you're getting a tattoo from every podcast episode? Is that going to be the name of this tattoo? The Pequod? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Lower back. Here's my Pequod. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> good. That's That's a good one to show off. And so anyways, Lieutenant Commander Starbuck, he comes, he's the XO of the, of the Pequot and he comes up and he's like, you got to come with us. And she's like, what are you talking about? I'm not coming with you anywhere. And he's like, it's a matter of national security. You have to come with us. And so she's like, okay, Pip, take care of business. Let everyone know what happened to me. I got to go on this, on this boat. And like, oh no, Pip's coming with us too. And so they both have to go. They end up on the submarine and they... Uh, start telling them about and kind of about why they're been brought on board because it's been a whole bunch of attacks by a big old whale and we know because mm -hmm. we're the viewers we know what they're talking about have they said how big it is yet in the movie or not um i think around here is when they when they talk about it right because they talk yeah, about yeah i think she isn't she saying like 
Oh, what did she say? Some kind of whale is 84 feet, and this one's like six times that or something? Yeah, there was some evidence of, of – or some some docu- document that they show her where it says it's like 600 feet long. And yeah, she's like, well, yeah. come on. I mean, the lo- longest sperm whale is 80, 82 feet long or something. Like why – you know, that's that's impossible. Like, And then, you know, Captain Ahab comes out, and he's like, oh, it's not impossible because I saw it. 1969, never forget, Summer of Love. And Dude, I've got a recording. He looked like a badass, too. He looked like a crazy person, which I guess is yeah. on brand for Ahab. But. And he's got this amazing scar all down his face. Yeah, he also, does. <laughs> he reminded me of uh, something he did. He reminded me of like a Cloverleaf from Tropic Thunder. Oh, yeah. <laughs> in, his, in his captain's quarters. Like, he's like, I had my mattress removed. I was too comfortable. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Like, yep. What the fuck? I liked how, um, and Jamie, you might have been already, you're going to probably get to this or something, but a lot of, I don't know if it was the other characters, but Ahab as an adult started busting out a lot of lines that were directly from the novel, right? Yeah. Yep. Like yeah, some the one the- I wrote down was, I'd strike the sun if it insulted me. Yes. Yeah. That was that's the line. It, yeah. yeah. That's the line that I stopped. I paused the movie and I'm like, there's no way they wrote that. Right. I some, of them, <laughs> some of them was interesting because it was these very like flowery uh, speeches that it was giving. And then, but they weren't ringing a bell. I think they did make up some of them, but a bunch of them were straight from the novel. It's weird. Every single character in this has, uh, has a name taken from the book. Even minor characters, for no reason, they just name after someone from the book. It's very strange. You got to get that nostalgia credit, am I right? It's like Boomer, <laughs> that's from the book. Ahab's from the book, obviously. Uh, Queequeg, Starbuck, um, even the even the plane pilot who helps out Boomer to get out to the Pequod later in the movie. He's like, oh, I'm Testigo. That's the name of one of the harpooners in Moby Dick, but it has like nothing to do with it. Just like it literally is just a name as if I'm supposed to sit there and like gasp that my favorite character has shown up as a pilot. Mm-hmm. But <gasps> there he is. I know, oh but God. it has nothing to do there with that is. character. <laughs> yes, there's, there's Testigo. Right, exactly. Oh, so anyways, uh, back on track, They we cut over and what do we see? We see a whale watching boat out yeah. and about taking tourists around. And the captain of the boat's like, oh, look at these whales. I've never seen one do a full breach before. And this whale shoots up out of the water. It's amazing. It's full body extension. And then Moby Dick shoots up, eats the thing like it's nothing. And crushes the boat, too. Just takes yeah. it off. Yeah. Kills almost everyone. And that's kind of prompting. So back in San Diego... A bunch of the muckety mucks of the Navy, they've gotten together and they're like, something's going on with Ahab. He's the Pequod's out doing their own thing. We got to take him out. And they bring in uh, Captain Boomer, who was the other person on the original sub in 1969. And they tell him about it and kind of to try to investigate. And so he starts going off and he, he turns out to be kind of like the good guy. He wants to really talk to Ahab and figure out what's going on. He doesn't believe that all these attacks that are really being committed by Moby Dick are being committed by Ahab, which it seems to be what the Navy's convinced of. And so he's going to go figure it all out. But the Navy's p- pretty much set on just sinking the Pequod. Yeah. Yeah. He's going rogue. Yeah. And now he basically lets his... I, sorry, I can't remember her name. I just ever written down as the researcher. Oh, Michelle. Notes. So think of it like... Because <laughs> the main character of Moby Dick is Ishmael. So they named her Michelle. Oh. oh. So Michelle. Yeah. Um, oh, I didn't so, catch that. All right. I'm telling you, every single character is related to Pip is a character in Moby Dick, but he's kind of a very minor character. Yes, exactly. Pippi Longstocking is from Moby Dick. Pipperino. She's got got bright red hair, two braids, and then she's got superhuman strength for some reason. I think that was Pippi Longstocking. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you were describing um, Pip from this movie, and I'm like, that's absolutely opposite. (laughs) 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 So anyways, Ahab... Let's Michelle know that <laughs> they want to use her technology and her ability to lure whales in by playing sounds back at them. And she says, well, guess what, boy? I've never even seen this whale. How can I know what it sounds like? And he busts out a cassette from 1969 and it's says, tape, yeah. why don't you check yourself before you wreck yourself? I got you a mixtape, honey. She's like, oh, no, you didn't. He's like, I totally did. 
So she starts listening to it. That was accurate. That was great, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and but she starts listening to it, and she goes through the same thing that she's she's also super great at sonar. She goes through the same Hold process on. as Ahab. Dude, Pip Pip saves the day. Here, oh, that's though. true. Yeah, yeah. we got to reference what he does. It's magic yeah. hands. Because I don't even know if this is possible. I don't know the <laughs> width of films or whatever. Well, I could tell um, you a story. When I was growing up, we used to have Betamax, right? And I wanted to watch one of my Betamax tapes. Uh, but we, our Betamax player had broken. So I tried re-spooling that Betamax onto a VHS. And do you know what happened? That go? You invented the DVD player. Almost. Uh, it turned out the video didn't work. It was shit. But you could hear it. The sound is fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah, it was weird. That's really weird. <laughs> uh, so anyways, the cassette tape is stuck. But that's not a problem for Pip, because Pip's been here before. He's like, I used to drive a 1942 Durango. And they're like, what the fuck are you talking about? Was that even invented then? He's like, I don't know. But it had a cassette player and then a micro cassette player. And they're like, Pip, no. The cassette was invented in 1963. And so anyways, <laughs> he's able to unspool the cassette and then re-spools it on a micro cassette because somehow they got that, like they've got that in 2010. Who isn't carrying around little micro cassette recorders? And it works. Works perfectly fine. Yep. And she hears the same thing that he does. She's like, there's a void. It's not really a sound. It's absence of sound. And then she goes, and then there's like the big roar. And she's like, my God, Moby Dick. Did I just hear a dick? And that's when Barry Bostwick comes out and he's like, you talking about this? My Captain Dick? And she's like, no, put that away. He's like, oh, sorry. Right? Right, yep. guys? Yeah. No. That, that would totally happen. Right. I was all scarred up. I was going to make a joke about it's a, it's like a Dick eating his dick. Well, I was going to say, that's actually like an ivory carved dick because it was ripped off by a movie dick. Ooh. How about that one? That'd be something. Yep. So anyways, uh, the USS Essex is another submarine. It starts kind of coming after them because uh, they've got orders to sink Ahab. And so they're off the coast of Hawaii and they hear the Essex out there, but oh boy, what else do they hear out there? Moby Dick. Nothing. Yeah, the void. exactly. The void. And it's it's going after the Essex. And they try to, like, Ahab for a second's like, oh man, what do you, like, uh, can we make it to them? And it's like, no, they can't make it. And you can see the look on his face, like devastation, that Moby Dick will claim more lives. Oh, dude, and he does. He's heading straight for the... The Ohio class. Oh, is Essex. that right? Essex was an Ohio class? Yeah. Oh. And he just he roars. Roar! Right. Oh, good. That was, be- that was better than was, mine. Was that the whale? That was. Yeah, it was a, that was a whale sound directly sh- from the movie. We all need to do our best whale impression right now. Go. Roar. Wow. That was great. <gasps> Somebody, somebody was very good, <clears throat> unless that was Zach's soundboard. Hey, that was if, if you're if you're giving me a compliment, that was not the soundboard. I, I guess again. that's a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> that was less good. <laughs> I don't know about the end there. But yeah, no, it wasn't. Whatever. It wasn't super great at the end, but. <laughs> So anyways, <laughs> <laughs> the Pequod goes after and uh, and it, it what it finds in, in the place of the sub is just a bunch of corpses. So obviously Moby Dick. Dude, Crushed corpse on. after corpse after corpse. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Actually, the Essex ended up getting destroyed by its own torpedo, right? It wasn't that kind of part of oh, it? Oh, that's right. There was a big, because they shot at the Pequod. They're like, we're going to take that mofo down and... Well, no, sorry. They shoot at Moby Dick mm-hmm. because he gets in between them and the Pequod. Well, I think, like, they, think oh they think it's the Pequod. Yeah. yeah, That's true. They do. Yep. And then the whale is like using the juke juke stick. Is that, is that copyrighted by football video games? I don't know. But they're going all over the place and the whale can evade. And then eventually he comes back right at them and gets one of their torpedoes to collide with them. <laughs> and it's not a way you want to want to go yeah so they move on and the Pequod eventually thinks that it finds Moby Dick right they think they see this big 600 foot target they're like oh shit that's Moby Dick uh Michelle she's like no 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 it doesn't sound like what you expected to sound that does not that's not Moby Dick but Ahab's so caught up in the moment and he's a real crazy person um 
that he's like, no, 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 it definitely is. But all of a sudden there's a helicopter there too. And the helicopter comes around and just starts shooting bullets at them through the water somehow. And they're like, oh yeah. shit. And like, oh man, the, the hole's going to hold. I'm like, yeah, obviously. Well, it's like a machine gun. They're trying to shoot th- through the ocean. Like that's not going to pierce right. the hull of a submarine. Obviously. And so anyways, um, <laughs> Ahab at this point is like, you know what? We're going to fire a sub <laughs> rock. A fire, nuclear, fire a nuke. <laughs> yeah. We're going to fire yeah. a nuclear um, missile at at the whale. And so the helicopter has literally no idea what the sub is doing. Everybody thinks they've gone rogue. And so this <laughs> nuclear missile launches yeah. out of the water, almost hits the helicopter, and then it just goes on to the water, and then we get this little bit with them. Congratulations, Pequod. You've nuked a school of squid. <laughs> Dynamic. Where there are squid, there are whales. Dude, where there are squid, there are whales. Oh. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I did not catch on. I must have like daydreamed during that moment because I just looked back at the screen and saw that m- giant explosion i'm like that seemed excessive and then they said it was a nuclear explosion i'm just like what the hell yeah <laughs> yeah uh, yeah nuke it's crazy. gotta nuke something but then that ahab was, was totally spot on because he's like where there are squid there are whales and guess what uh a whale immediately shows up and fucking takes down that helicopter no problem not just a whale the whale moby dick yeah yeah and so anyways Next up, the whale goes after a big old cruise liner for some reason. Uh, we see a, a random scene of it attacking a cruise liner called the SS Rachel. They had to put that in there. They had to make sure, oh, by the way, this is the SS Rachel. Because uh, that's also from the book Moby Dick. Cool. I thought it was a Friends reference. Uh, it was also a Friends reference. Oh, I mean, Moby Dick was referencing Friends when Melville wrote that. But Oh, okay. It was referencing sense. the haircut, the the Rachel. That became a huge fad. Oh, mm-hmm. yes. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, the Pequod, uh, what happens now? Oh, so also, when the Navy gets word of the helicopter going down, obviously they're not going to be like, well, a big whale took it down. (laughs) And uh, when they launched that nuclear missile, they weren't going to try to hit one of our helicopters. So, Uh, yeah, they immediately think that the Pequod shot down this Black Hawk, and it's on. Yeah. So, and the Pequod is really just trying to save the day. So it kind of intervenes with that cruise ship uh, that's being attacked. And because like Moby Dick's going to like crush through the bottom of it and like hit it once and now it's going to hit it again. So quickly, Michelle uses her whale song generator to attract Moby Dick to them. And uh, Ahab being a maniac that he is, he's, he's made his own harpoon, which seems really strange for a submarine to shoot like a harpoon. But anyway, he's got this harpoon made from the hull of his old submarine that he was on, the Akushnet or whatever. And he like puts his blood all over it and was like, now forge with my blood or some shit. And yeah. then he puts this harpoon well, in. Yeah, he grabs it with his hand and just dr- gets blood all over. And then he never has any problem with that hand. <laughs> yeah. The movie. He doesn't even bandage it. No. I think he said now it's tempered. <clears throat> yeah, which was actually a yes. scene. That's a scene from Moby Dick where they, he constructs a new a, a harpoon uh, and tempers it with his own blood dra- directly from the book. Great. Yeah. There you go. It's really, it's one of those things where I was gasping in awe. As, oh, how how easily they've converted the, this classic story to my big screen. I can't believe it. Mm-hmm. It's very exciting. So anyways, Moby Dick charges the Pequod. And gets close enough, and eventually Ahab launches his harpoon out of the torpedo tube, and it is also tethered to the sub, so one harpoon is not going to take down the 600-foot whale, so the sub's in for a little bit of a ride. That's right. And I can't imagine how rough that had to have been, because the whale's swimming at 6 million miles an hour. That was something Kyle, like that, yeah. that's not possible. Slow down. Sorry. It was a little bit of embellishment, just a little bit. And yeah, so they, they, they're they diving deeper and deeper and deeper. Basically, Moby Dick's like retreating down to the trench. And so they're going way past crush depth. Although they don't really say crush depth, but they imply it. Well, all right. <laughs> they're, 
getting down to like 4,000 feet. And uh, Pip looks at one of the guys on the submarine. He's like, how, how far down can we go? And the guy's like, that's classified. I'm like, in this time, you can't say anything. <laughs> I liked, how, I liked how, like, three minutes before that happened, Kyle, like, they just, like, Captain Ahab was just, what did he say, what was his line? He was just like, let's see how, like, he's just, like, laughing, starting to lose his mind, and he's just like, let's see how far she could take us. Like, yeah. <laughs> just not he's, giving he's a nuts. fuck at all. Dude, he doesn't need to, man. He's Captain Ahab. <laughs> he's great. Anyways, yeah, they, yeah. Ha- they say enough is enough, and this is just <laughs> one of my favorite scenes. They do an emergency blow. From 4,000 feet down. Yep. And, oh, my word, the sub (laughs) just skyrockets, comes out of the water at a 90-degree angle. Straight up, yep. Straight out. And then, you know, it lands, and everybody gets out on the deck like they all didn't just die from getting thrown against the walls of the sub. Yeah. And then Boomer shows up. He's been brought out there by this plane and because he's been following them. And what they want to do is they want to take Moby Dick into this atoll and kind of get him trapped into like the lagoon uh, on the inside. And so they kind of like maneuver him in there, kind of force him to retreat into this like lagoon. And then he's like, oh, man, how are we going to get – we can't go into there. It's only 60 feet. We're like too tall. And – He's like, oh, we got to do it old fashioned way. We got to go in our, get, get the zodiacs ready. So they're going to go right, out what and he actually said like is whale. We need to go after them like our ancestors did. Right. Like they're doing like old school whale hunting, I guess, in their little With zodiacs. Sea mines and, and his like crazy grenade launchers. His crazy like weird cartoon grenade launcher, which came out of nowhere. He was just like randomly carrying around like a giant gun that was looked like real stupid. It was badass. We'll sure. post a link of it online. <laughs> I I made sure to take a screenshot of that when I was watching this. Yes, yeah, so they all head in. Even even Michelle's kind of out there. She's in the Quiqua in uh, dropping the mines. So like two of them go into the atoll. The third one is laying mines down on the outside to kind of keep Moby Dick in there. Moby Dick immediately crushes all the boats. And so like Captain Ahab's in the water. Everyone's in the water. And they kind of wash up on shore and are just sitting there like, okay, what do we do now? And we start to get into the most, the craziest looking ludicrous scenes you'll ever see (laughs) where they're just like on shore and Moby Dick's like crawling around on the beach and shit. (laughs) It's really weird, like hiding behind mountains and stuff. Like I didn't, I started started like- He jumped over the atoll at one point. (laughs) Like nothing, physics and time made no sense at this point onwards. It just was literally someone with a computer being like, I don't know, I'm supposed to put Moby Dick into this scene. And so it like has him hiding behind like a mountain at some point. Like so weird. Yeah. Then he just, that should be like, that should be like the one way to defeat a whale. You know, the beached whale is like this (laughs) famous image that we see, you know, where where these beautiful majestic creatures, you know, beach and they die. But this one's like jumping over mountains and (laughs) flopping and shit on the the beach. Scooting around the beach, no problem. He disguised himself as a beach at one point and the guy walked out on him. Yeah. They're like, he's like, they like walk out and all of a sudden an eye opens and it was it, Moby Dick was the beach the whole time. What a twist! Yep, that was ridiculous. Yeah, and so then and anyways, also that guy, the guy who stepped on him. If you're hunting a whale, what type of gun are you going to use? Shotgun. Shotgun, obviously. <laughs> like when he had a shotgun, I was like, "What? <laughs> like no way! You're not hunting a whale with a shotgun." He did. I don't know. It's neither here nor there. There's yeah. crazier things going on than a guy fighting a whale with a shotgun at this point. So yeah. Anyways, the Pequod at this point, what has he like? They shoot like a missile. They end up oh, getting all right. not yet. Yeah, not yet. Not I, yet I don't know. Man. Everything goes crazy at this point. Yeah. I so you're also, there's, you're there's also they, missing they, the time. Where Moby Dick skirts around the other side of the island. Right. Everybody's like, oh, oh, where'd he go? Where'd he go? And then he flies through the air yeah. and absolutely just crushes a dude right. on the other side. It was incredible. Ahab um, goes out. He wants to shoot his like giant silly gun. And he actually gets crushed at this point. He gets destroyed. No, he doesn't get I crushed. I thought he was going to shoot the whale right <clears throat> in the eye. He was aiming right at its eye and he shot it in the eyebrow. Yeah, 
And then, yeah. yeah. And he had a tether on it. It was a yeah. harpoon. And it wrapped around his ankle. And yeah. Moby Dick went under, dragged him under. And straight, which, out of, straight out of the book. Did, yeah, we didn't see that until like later on, like in a few minutes, right? When we just see his body just dragging behind right, him. Right, because now yeah. they're they're in like last ditch effort mode and they've got the Pequod uh, decides they're going to fire their four nuclear torpedoes into the gap because Moby Dick's going to be trying to escape. They've got the mines in there. They say between the mines and the nuclear warheads, we got them, folks. There's no way that he gets away from us. I'll let you guys take it from here. <laughs> and he gets away from him. Yeah, and uh, ben, ben with the tease. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, he gets away from him. Somehow them. Moby Dick detonates the mines. Yep, and they think, "Oh, yay, we got him!" But then they mm-hmm. realize they didn't. Nope. And the torpedoes have just skirted their way through the lagoon, and they're headed straight towards land. There are basically three survivors at this point. Two people on the beach are like, "Ah." Eh, Boomer, yeah. We're just gonna we're gonna surrender, and then the researcher Michelle is like, "Well, I think I can get away from this. I'm gonna run up the island." And they're like, "You can't outrun a nuclear warhead." <laughs> apparently, they're wrong. She does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, Idiots. apparently, every piece of land literally blew <clears throat> up, and she somebody, was just floating somebody in the hasn't ocean. seen the newest Rambo, and she ran up the mountain. Hmm. I haven't well, seen you, the newest you're, Rambo. You're the, are, oh, okay. <laughs> You're the big Sly Stallone fan. I love Sly Stallone. He, out, he, outruns, seen the news uh, he outruns like a nuclear explosion. I love the sound of that for Bad yeah. Movie Now you got to now you got now you got to watch it. Indiana Jones survived a nuclear explosion and a that's true in a fridge. refrigerator. That yeah, that one right. doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, Pequod gets crushed by Moby Dick. Moby Dick gets away. The island explodes, but Michelle survives to tell the story as the narrator the of 2010 Moby Dick. I wish she got her own spinoff movie, 2011 Moby Dick. Wait, but this is her movie. Oh. She's the narrator. Moby Pussy. Call her Ishmael. Oh. Call her Ishmael. Better than my name. So, yeah, that was 2010 uh, Moby Dick. I think this might have been one of the fastest recaps ever since the movie was 87 minutes long. Could be. I mean, we still went over the <clears throat> allotted time. Yeah, we but definitely did. Kyle's a bitch, so it doesn't matter. That's true. Actually, I in, agree. in my uh, oh. in my research, if I've been going back and listening to all of our episodes, I found that the DOS boot recap is actually one of the shorter recaps. We that came makes in. No we sense. came in under time, <laughs> and it was a four hour movie, and it was like the best it, movie too. It came in under time. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> what? There's one we had where we came in way under time. Like a few minutes under time. I can't remember which <laughs> uh, one that was, though. Yeah, I'll, I'll get to it here before long. Mm. Ooh, he will. All right. All right, let's get into some ratings on this. I want to hear from Brom. Ooh. Ooh. Well, I've been, <clears throat> pardon me, I've been getting over a summer cold. Oh, I shouldn't date it. A nondescript season of the year cold. Yeah, and that, that was beautiful. Thank you. Mm-hmm. They can just and edit it's the not rest in of summer it. Summer yet, man. <clears throat> That's true. Gosh, one sec. All right. Well, okay, he's I'm back. doing that. I'll t- okay. <laughs> what, what do you have for us, Zach? <laughs> no, don't worry about it. Okay. Just whale sounds. <laughs> so, uh, okay. <laughs> you can you can uh, you can save those for uh, Zach facts. Okay. <laughs> you can separate each Zach fact with a whale sound. Hey, don't tell me how to do my job. Okay, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> It's all you. Uh, so with uh, with uh, 2010 Moby Dick, again, beyond the struggle of trying to find this one, I mean, I'm actually pretty shocked how many Moby Dicks uh, are out there. A lot, of, a lot of Moby Dick out there. So <laughs> we could do a whole season. We discussed it. Dick cast. You know what? We just got to pick a season for it. Uh, I don't know if you guys have, have, a, have a number in mind. but Season six. Season six. I Talkin will double dick. check. I'll double check that that one's not already booked. <laughs> six pack of dicks. <laughs> Talking dick. Six dicks. pack of dicks. We would six. six Moby Dick films a week. Oh, oh my <laughs> word. <laughs> Ultimately, though, I did find the correct movie. I watched it. It was very bad. It was. <laughs> <laughs> it was like the least descriptive Ben's ever been. <laughs> just, just very bad. Very bad. <laughs> it's just it's just one of those you see on uh, sci-fi or something like that. The Sharknados of the world. 
um, where you can tell they're not taking themselves too seriously and it's just really stupid. And the CGI was was god awful. <laughs> really somebody bad. said it somebody looked somebody said it looked like uh fifth graders uh did the CGI on this and honestly, yeah, it was it, it wasn't much better than what you would have got out of a fifth grade classroom. Um I mean, I did enjoy parts of it. Obviously, it was it was goofy. Uh, obviously, there were many humorous moments. Most of them probably intentional. Again, again, with it being most likely tongue in cheek. Um, so this isn't one of those where I'm gonna say it was a horrible movie. I we watched a few recently where I've given given them like a four or five just because they were so bad they were really good. This is better than Stinger, but uh, only just. I'm gonna give it a point five. Wow. Ooh, I thought for sure you're gonna come in higher, so I, I I'll go next. I don't I don't mind oh, going next. Damn it! I uh, this movie is awful. Um, <laughs> it's really really bad. Y- everyone seemed to be having a jolly good time. I thought for sure you'd come in higher because it seemed like you were having a good time. I, it's just one of Texting those like if you're it, rating like it on like bad movies, I don't know. Maybe it's it's like a seven or eight of like your no, bad movies. It's not. But it's not. <laughs> it's just bad. It's just yeah. a bad movie. <laughs> it, it it looks like shit. They basically just took Moby Dick and shoehorned it into a submarine movie, which it just doesn't. A lot of it just doesn't even make sense. And they, they just every character you could possibly think of in the in the movie or in the book, they just figure out some way to do it. Like there, even the harpoon had like a name, the harpoon weapon that they that he had. Yeah, yeah. And that name, <laughs> Fidella or something, was a character in Moby Dick. So just like they put a name of this random character onto an object and was like there. That's what it is. Everything in Moby Dick had to be in this. And I yeah, could I, I, I don't know if you guys touched upon it, but they were they were like self-aware of of Moby Dick as a character, like this yeah, yeah, fi- yeah. fictitious beast. So like, okay, so is it like a, a mythical creature in your universe? This but is, yeah, the book this never is, existed or yeah, what? Yeah, the book did 100% the book did not exist cuz someone in that movie would have been like, this is just like that book. <laughs> it's just like the book. And your name yeah. is Ahab. This is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like all of our names are from the book. This quick, quick, world what famous the fuck? book, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so there's no way the book exists. But it did seem like everyone was like, "Yeah, Moby Dick." Everyone knows that from the Whaling Times. It's been around forever. It literally had harpoons all ac- all across its yep. body yep. from being hunted before. So clearly, like, had been around for like a hundred years, like two hundred years. I don't even know how old this whale is. Like three hundred years old, four hundred, five hundred years old, <laughs> six hundred years old, like a thousand years old. It's old as time like itself. Probably. Some say so, it was the denizen of the planet Earth. Wow. I didn't read it. I didn't get that at all, though. <laughs> wow. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, what movie but, did you watch, Jeremy? <laughs> uh, I, I watched this one, which was terrible. And moral of the story is, I actually somehow I'm coming in higher than Brom. I didn't realize that was, I didn't know that was an option. Uh, <laughs> I'm coming in at one and a half. Cause you it always wasn't, come in higher than me. I don't know. I somehow on I some came of these stupid higher. ones. You're right, though. I sometimes will give a stupid one credit, like I said. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I guess this is definitely better than Stinger. I look at something like Agent Red, and I think maybe it's it's more coherent, but maybe just because it's based on the book, they had some kind of coherency there. But like, it, it, I guess it made sense from start. This was to just far worse than the Rift, though. Like, oh, I think yeah, we can no, all, that's yeah. the thing. Like the Rift is the fun one it's like a heads exploding there's things you can point to to be like there's quality here like i think yeah. i think there were times with the special effects where you're like oh that's fun looking and there were fun characters and fun mm-hmm. lines and i and think this just lacked all of that no this is this is the lazy version of it like the thing that we we watched for bad on badmovietwins.com that's badmovietwins.com we watched transmorphers which is another asylum film uh knockoff of transformers and it made me sad and this Made me sad as well. It's just, it, it makes you sad because it's clearly just a bunch of people making something to make it, and then you know try to try to earn some bucks off it. They probably have some deal with sci-fi to make something. It's just like it. You can see it's like an obligation. It's a job. They're just making something. It doesn't matter how good or bad it is. It's like meh. So would so you sucks. give it one and a half? One and All right. Half. All right. Hold on. But Brom, oh. you would watch. Sorry, you <laughs> would watch. Submergence again before no, no, you would no. watch this again? <clears throat> no, Submergence is the worst movie we've watched. That you gave a one. Yeah, but it was an art film and I, I didn't want to uh, hurt okay. uh, Vim Vender's feelings, so I gave him a one. 
Okay. All right. All right. Hey, Fair real quick enough. before before Zach cuts in here, did, <laughs> did you have my uh, did you have my quote in there? Did I miss it? I don't think so. I I don't think I had, could so find you, that one. So you really dropped the whale, didn't you, Kyle? I dropped the whale hard. I got I got to get it in there because it was it was it was like the one redeem. It's what gave this a, a point five for me. There was a point, <clears throat> kind of halfway through the film, where she still believed, you know, this is a whale. You know, maybe it's a reasonable creature. We don't have to kill it. And she goes, "Why would a Why would a whale act like this?" And the captain Ahab goes, "Why do babies die in their sleep?" Some hardcore shit. It was pretty dark. Barry Bostick, baby. Yeah, I bet he, I bet he improv that line. Could I hope so? That one's not. Okay. From, I don't think that one's from Moby Dick. Do I? Do I hear somebody wanting to cut in? Yeah. Wait. Can I cut <laughs> in real quick? <laughs> I'm cutting in, and that's, and I'm dropping the anchor. <laughs> All right. So, 2010 Moby Dick. Um, I'm gonna. Yeah, this movie was terrible. Uh, it's, it's not good, right? Like, it's not good. It took me two minutes to get into it to realize I was like, oh my God, this is one of those asylum films. And those are those films, like Jamie and everybody else was saying, those are that sci-fi movies, right? I mean, just to give you an idea, idea of what the asylum hashes out every year, we're talking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten movies in 2018 alone. Jeez. In 2017, oh Asylum had 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 movies. Holy like cow. Like Five-Headed Shark Attack, Geo Disaster, Evil Nanny, Oceans Geo Rising, <laughs> Sharknado 5, Global Swarming. Like, this is what we're dealing with, people. And it's not good. So, I mean, the only good part about this entire movie for me was Barry Bostwick. And I was like, oh, my God, the guy from it's the mayor from Spin City. <laughs> he, he made me laugh. I like that guy. And I liked him. I thought he was good. I liked his get up, his scar, his one legged crazy guy. I love how he got the wooden peg leg. Did we mention yeah. that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he oh, took a yeah. crucifix from a dead leper priest and attached it to his leg. And then he took a hammer and knocked off both arms of the crucifix or cross, I guess it would be. To give himself a wooden peg leg after the after Moby Dick ran off with his metal leg. <laughs> yeah, it was it was uh he's he's the reason I'm going to give this movie a rating of a one. Wow. That's the Ooh. only reason is because of Barry Bostwick. Otherwise, this would have been a zero. I will never watch this movie again. I really don't like asylum movies. And for some reason, I've seen a handful of them. So, <laughs> yeah, thanks. It tells for the, you a lot about me. Thanks for the insights about that. I didn't realize this was from the people that made all those. Oh, man. If you pull up the Wikipedia page, they've done like probably over 100 movies in the last 10 years. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, they really hit it big with those, uh, the Sharknado ones, unfortunately. Yeah. So. Un very unfortunate, but you know what? Coming out this year, just so you know, is Zombies 2, Monster Island, Pet Graveyard, and Adventures of Aladdin. <laughs> Pet Graveyard, great. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. So tune in to that. All right. I'll bring up the rear. Um, yeah, you will. Yeah. All right. Whatever. I was amazed at this movie. You can tell, as everybody said, it's bad. I was amazed the acting was not worse than what it was. Barry Bostwick, I thought, did a pretty good job. Better than pretty good. I mean, he did a good job. Uh, Renee O'Connor did fine. Uh, but, oh, my word, the visuals on this movie were just so bad. And even to take a quote directly from the movie... This sucks. Sucks. <laughs> what was that? I'm confused. What was that? Just <laughs> I said you said this I sucks. Think, I think I got my sound clips a little screwed up there, but they just said it sucks. Uh, oh. This movie sucks, man. It's not good. But I would much rather watch this than something like Submergence, which I mentioned earlier. That was absolutely horrible. Um, I disagree with you guys. I, Submergence has its qualities. <laughs> I was also looking at my old ratings, and I gave. Like, would I rather watch this again or the Neptune Factor? Uh, oh. I, rated, I rated the Neptune Factor way too high. I actually think I would rather watch Neptune Factor. Really? No, I yeah. don't think so. 
Ernest Borgnine does his thing. Whatever. Those are my bottom two for sure. Submergence and Neptune Factor. I would, I would definitely like rewatch Stinger before those two. Oh, come on. Get out of here. Stinger is worthless. Oh, yeah. I can't even see anything. Stinger has worth. Stinger, Stinger has some. Worth. Give this a 1.75. Oh. oh. There we go. Not last. Feels Not like the, you're trying to highest. narrowly fit it in between a couple different scores there. Yeah, I was like, where where am I gauging this? And it's it's going to be about there. Visually, it was just so poorly made. Yep, was. All right. Should we get into some trivia? Let's. As I said, literally every name in the film is from the book Moby Dick, even random people. The most clever they got was they made Ishmael into Michelle, as we mentioned. And weirdly, they made Ahab the captain's last name. Did you? Did anyone catch his first name? Barry. No. Jonah, like the whale, get it? Uh, Jonah and the whale. Uh, but anyways, in the book, Ahab's his first name. They don't ever mention his last name. And in, in one adaption of Moby Dick, they did give him a last name. It was Seeley, so Ahab Seeley. Hmm. But yeah, hmm. for some whatever reason, they made it their his like last the name in this one. I have no idea. Uh, this was the only uh, trivia from IMDb page. The sound effect used when the sonar pulses are sent out is the same one as used in the original War of the Worlds film. When the alien periscope is scanning the area after it has been constructed by the op- op- occupants of the cylinders. So that's a cool little fun fact. Yeah, they just ripped that out, huh? Yeah. Uh, so as mentioned, this was made by The Asylum. It, they specialize... Um, they have their are some original films, but they actually specialize in mockbusters, or at least originally that's kind of what they did. And so mockbusters are films that are rip off some major releases, and then they hope to get some kind of like press or just to trick people into watching them, seemingly. Uh, so some notable examples are Transmorphers, knockoff of Transformers, AVH, Alien vs. Hunter, which is AVP, Alien vs. Predator, uh, Sunday School Musical, which I think you can figure out. Uh, the day, <laughs> the day the Earth stopped. So the, the the day the Earth stood still. Oh my word! Uh, Battle of Los Angeles, which was a ripoff of Battle of Los Angeles. Uh, <laughs> Abraham Lincoln versus zombies, which was Abraham Lincoln vampire hunter, et cetera, et cetera. You can just keep on going. You even mentioned one pet. <laughs> Wait, uh, pet you graveyard. said Battle for Los Angeles, which is a ripoff of Battle, Battle for Los, Los Angeles. An- no, Battle Battle Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> Battle of Colon Los Angeles is a film. Uh, they, they released Battle of Los Angeles. <laughs> Are they just hoping that people don't sue them? Find this? <laughs> I don't. I, like, I don't like, really know. They're at like a rental place, and they're like, "Oh, look! I wanted to see that one. Doesn't this have the rock in it?" And you're like, "The rental place? What, you, what you just said doesn't even exist. I'm not going to. Like, there's no rental place anymore. So uh, I'm not Red sure Box, what they're trying I to guess. do. Yeah, I don't know. But you even mentioned one pet graveyard coming out. This year is a ripoff of Pet Cemetery, so clearly still doing it all the way to this day. <laughs> uh, they also made a film called Thirty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea, so should pro- we should probably check that one out. <laughs> oh, great! It'd be funny if it didn't have a submarine in it. Um, all right, so they do go are out they, of the way. Are they mention, working on uh, Killer Hunter? Oh, maybe. What do, what, what do, what do it be called? Killer Hunter, because of Hunter Killer. Oh, there we go. Sorry, you mixed it up. Yeah. Uh, or, or Man Aqua. <laughs> for Aquaman. Yeah. Aquaman. Waterman. The Mexican Aquaman. <laughs> um, I'd watch that one for sure. Ombre, ombre de Agua. Uh, so they meant, do you mention what type of submarine the USS Pequot is? Did anyone catch that one? Oh, they did. I forget. It is a souped up Virginia class submarine. Yes. So he, he oh. constructed himself, designed it <clears throat> himself in order to hunt this whale. It was also weird that in the middle of the movie, he's like, everyone wants to kill the whale. Don't you see they're still with me? It's like, why are these, why are the people running this nuclear submarine like so jazzed about killing a whale? Very not until you've tried it, man. I don't know. Did, it makes more sense in Moby Dick when their job is to kill whales. You know? Yeah, rather than to like defend the country. <laughs> right. Yeah. It makes more sense that there's real jazz to kill a whale. And Starbuck is a little bit concerned, but everyone's like, nah, forget about it. We're still killing whales. Here it's like, this is totally off topic. It has nothing to do with your job. But they're like really psyched to be with Ahab killing a whale. Very odd. Anyways, that, that was just a random factoid. That was a Virginia class uh, because I'm scraping the bottom of the barrel. I don't have much trivia for this movie. Just kind of figuring some stuff out. Uh, all right. So the director um, <laughs> is actually best known for a series of Star Wars fan films called Pink Five. 
uh, and those series of films won a big Star Wars fan con- contest back in the day and actually even got – he got to go to – Industrial Light and Magic and get it remastered with all you know, special sounds and stuff like that from real Star when, Wars. When was back in the day, like 2005? That would have been in early, I think that would have been late late 90s maybe, okay. early 2000s. And then he made us. He made it the full series. So he made uh, Pink Five, then he made uh, Pink Five Shakes Back, I think, and then Return of Pink Five or something. And so he, he, he kind of got a little bit famous off of that uh but he before that he had mostly worked as a puppeteer and creature effects guy in hollywood uh i mean obviously you can tell from the stellar creature work in this one um so what other actors from some of his other puppeteering films uh could have chewed some scenery in this piece of shit so kevin dillon was from 19 1988's the blob so do people know who kevin dillon is mm, not i don't a clue. think so he was like he's matt dillon's brother he was in entourage uh. Entourage. Anyways, he's from Entourage. Entourage. So. Entourage. <laughs> I just watched that episode. <laughs> oh, yes, I do recognize this guy. Yes. So anyways, I don't know who it would be. He could have been Starbuck, maybe? Yes, I was thinking Starbuck. Yeah. What about Peter Weller from RoboCop 2? Oh, Obviously, the titular yeah. RoboCop. Or from Leviathan. Is that right? Is he from Leviathan? Yeah, he's the main guy. Woo! Got to be our Captain Ahab, right? I think that's right. Get Peter Weller all mm-hmm. up there. Or should Ahab be Danny DeVito from Batman Returns? <laughs> oh, done. That is Ahab. If you had Danny DeVito in this movie, you'd elevate it. Give that's him a true. bandana and make him quip quig. Good one. Uh, what about Matt <laughs> Damon from <laughs> Team America World Police? Matt Damon. <laughs> yeah. Are we talking... The puppet Matt Damon? Because <laughs> I'd love that. Either or both. All of them. If they maybe expanded the sort of in- introductory scene a little bit, he could have been Ahab as a as a youth. <laughs> this oh. Puppet Matt Damon. Puppet Matt Damon. And then, it, and then the later uh, Ahab is Danny DeVito. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be good. <laughs> And what he, about he lost Ed both Harris. of his legs, and they can just—they don't even have to do CGI or anything. They can just have uh, Danny DeVito is just really short in his leg shirt. <laughs> <laughs> he just filmed from the Real waist up. All right. <laughs> uh, so, what about Ed Harris? So he actually did do puppet work on The Abyss, um, but also Ed Harris's other film, which was—it uh, was called uh, The Muppet Armageddon. And so the world is being threatened by a large asteroid, but it can only be. Um, it can only be mitigated by the the power of hope, and so uh, the astronauts can't learn that fast enough. Like they're just not good, they're just not good enough. So they get the Muppets to come in and do it, and it's actually real like sad because like a bunch of the Muppets die in the process of like trying to stop this asteroid, and Kermit has to sacrifice himself at the end in order to stop the asteroid with with a bomb. He like it blows himself up, and uh, and in the end, so Ed Harris played the asteroid in that one. Is that the plot of Armageddon? What? It's a plot, it's, uh, plot of Muppet Armageddon. Oh. Yes. I didn't get the, the specifier in there. I thought it was just regular Armageddon. No, nope, that was Muppet. Similar. Nope. Nope. Muppet Armageddon. No. Similar plot, but Ed Harris plays the asteroid <clears throat> in one of them, so you want to watch that one. I was thinking well, you were going to be like going with the idea that Ed Harris was the puppet master of you know all of the Muppets, and there's one day where he was extra greasy and he fumbled the marionettes, and oh they God. all like fell into, like I don't know. Something like a fire or something. Oh my god, a fire! And, and a, yeah, and he has like a existential crisis because he Holy destroyed shit. all of these puppets. Wow, <laughs> that'd be pretty great. That's deep. That like is Ed deep. Harris. Ed Harris should be Michelle, maybe. I would make him Moby Dick himself. Whoa, good one. The fish face and all, man. Wow. Maybe he. I think he. Are you sure? Are we sure he wasn't already Moby Dick? He could have been. It's like one of I did those not situations. check the credits that closely. Or what was the movie where Ed Harris was rumored to be like the voice of some famous? Oh, oh, Field of Dreams, right? He was like, it's rumored that Ed Harris is the if you if you build it, they will come. Really? Yeah. So maybe he was already the the voice of Moby Dick in this one. He was like, wow. <laughs> why? Why would that be a rumor? Why wouldn't they just say who did it? I don't think they've ever said. Hmm. Other than the rumor that it was Ed Harris. Huh. That's kind of yeah. cool. Adds to his aura. Well, I think his, isn't his wife in it? I think maybe that's why. But anyways. 
Oh. Anyways, uh, so <laughs> should I do a little uh, Phantom Zone? Yep. Engage the Phantom. God. Love his voice. <laughs> Phantom's engaged, sir. A little Duchovny? Yeah. All right, so you think this will be hard, right? You're like, 2010, Moby Dick. Jamie's never going to be able to do this. Uh, wrong. It isn't. It's actually really easy. Uh, somehow this seems to be a hub that we could maybe funnel a whole bunch of really bad films through because it jumps almost immediately to a number of different movies that we can do. Um, so anyways, the easiest route was actually through Boomer, uh, played by Matt Langan. He was randomly in Lorelei. He's in the movie Lorelei, Witch of the Pacific or whatever. Oh, really? Yeah, he was like the American captain? submarine captain. Oh. But anyways, it's crazy because even when I did Lorelei, I went back and looked at my Phantom Zone and I was like, I don't think I can do this. And then I found like just like a random route through it. But somehow I could have just jumped over to this movie. I just didn't realize it. Anyways, I'm not going to do it this time. Uh, instead, I'll use Barry Boswick because I want to. And he actually was kind of amazing in this. Like he really gave it his all. Um sometimes to the detriment of the rest of the film. But uh, he, I'm going to jump through him to uh, the TV movie Death Charge, now on Tubi TV, so you can watch it, all you viewers out there. Uh, and that has Eric Roberts in it. Um, but I'm going to use instead Marty Lodge, who was in that and The Hunley. And I think you have that one, right, Kyle? Oh, I've got it. Yeah, it's about a Civil War submarine. So it's probably it'll be the oldest submarine that we'll see something about, I think. And then uh, from there, we can go through Mustard Man's best friend, Donald Sutherland. So he was in the Hunley um, and also in the Bedford incident. And we can go from there to Helen High Water, uh, which I wanted to mention also because I think I previously had said we had finished all of the all of the submarine films nominated for Oscars. Wrong. Helen High Water actually does – was also nominated for an Oscar. Oh, so that's nice. One. And we Not go from that to Operation Petticoat. And we've used that before, and we can just keep going. I mean, it is still a very roundabout way to get all the way back to Phantom, but obviously, we can do it. It can be done. Oh, it can be done. And it, it was. I did it. <laughs> and it was. It's over. That's yeah, it. That's it. That's Phantom Zone. So proud Play of the you. the theme song again. Joking. Don't do it. Engage the Phantom. It's, it's whales. 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 World. World. Wide. 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 Wait a second. So did, if did you, you haven't record, guessed it yet, did you record a new one just for that? <laughs> did that say whales? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, it said whales. Oh, I love it. It is WTF movie month, and so we gotta give you a WTF Whales Worldwide, right? We watched a movie about a whale. Come on, guys. Does anybody know the type of whale that Moby Dick was? Sperm. 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 All right, not beluga. It's a sper sperm whale. Sperm whale. <clears throat> sperm. It is a sperm whale. Yeah. So Moby Dick was considered a sperm whale. So today we're going to talk no, about oh, hold sperm on. whales. Not considered a sperm whale. He's very clearly a sperm whale. All right, whatever. Huh? I've never read the book. I've only watched this amazing movie on it. He talks about it so, like a whole bunch in the book. He's like, look at my spermy. Just well, no, swimming he away. Like, he like makes fun oh, of, Melville God. makes fun of like all the other whales. It's like, all these whales suck. Sperm whale's the best. Moby Dick does? No, Herman Melville, the author. Oh, gotcha. All right, so anyways. The sperm whale is the largest tooth whale and the largest tooth predator. <laughs> and as Brom had mentioned, they are affected by plastic pollution. They have been found with plastics in their stomachs, and they are currently considered vulnerable for their conservation status. However, they are now a protected species, and... There used to be a huge demand for them in the whaling industry, but you can no longer do that. So do you guys know why they're called sperm whales? I do. All right. Zach and Brom, do you guys know why? I believe I do, it I do originates not. from the Latin phrase spermatocious. Mm -hmm. And um, this was when they originally witnessed the um, coming out of the sperm in a whale form. So hmm. they, uh, you so, know, wow, that's spermatocious, dude. And then, you know, the kids started using slang and here we are in 2019. Those, Sperm Latin, those Latin school children. Yeah. They're crazy. Uh, Brom, do you, do you know why? <laughs> I do not. That's not right. All right, Jamie, you know why, huh? Yeah. So they've got this big old bulbous head and right in the front of their head is like this big old sack of fluid called spermaceti. And it's kind of like an oil. 
It is. It's Parmesan. And uh, mm-hmm. it's like it's an oil and it's it was used for all kinds of stuff. But uh, like candles and oil is used perfumes, for like perfumes, and dude, everything. You'd eat it sometimes. Tons People would of eat things. It. Oh. Um, and basically yep. it was – they still actually don't totally know exactly what it's used for by the sperm whale. There was two theories. One was that it was used – for going up and down so that they would ch- – like the sperm whale would like heat up this big sack of oil and it would change the buoyancy. But now they're pretty sure that it has something to do with sonar so that like they can mm. do uh, – they can it's modulate extra their hearing and stuff like that. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. So. Cool. Yeah. It, it literally was used for an insane amount of goods that were made. I couldn't even believe it when the list just kept going – on and on and on about everything that people were making from this oil. It was crazy. And actually, the oil is used to lubricate all the uh, moving parts of the whale because they're not even biological, they're mechanical. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. That tr- that's true? Yeah. Yeah, fact. Wow. Hmm. Um, so let's get some specs on these guys. So Moby Dick from 2010 was like 600 feet long. There's never been one recorded that big they are typically between 52 to 67 feet in length they have a crush depth of 7,382 feet <laughs> i like the idea that we're heading to crush depth <laughs> <laughs> oh pull up I mean, um, that's, so, that's our version of jonah and the whale is when he's in a whale yeah. and he's like we're going to crush depth that's the whales diving <laughs> yeah. and uh so they are the second deepest diving whale the only one that can outdo it is the Cuvier, I don't know if that's how you say it, or Cuviers, whatever, beaked whale. Hmm. In 2014, scientists recorded one diving to 9,816.27 feet for two hours and 17 minutes, making this the deepest and longest dive by a mammal ever. Is that it's deeper deep. than uh, Spielberg? Hmm... Has Cooper gone down? I know it was uh, no, uh, Cameron. Down. Cameron, Cameron, Yeah, what's, what's Challenger how, Deep how again? How deep is Challenger Deep, yeah. I can't remember. It's like 30,000 feet or something. Okay, so not even close. <laughs> um, Step up these the whales game, are also, whales. Yeah. Uh, these whales are also extremely loud, um, getting back to sperm whales. While communicating underwater, they can vocalize at decibel levels of 230 so to put that in perspective, a fighter jet taking off is measured at 150 decibels and shooting a shotgun is 160. Wow. They're also super effing heavy, coming in at 57 tons. That's a ton. And that's a ton. That's a ton, <laughs> can, guys. can you compare that to anything, Kyle, to help the listeners? Uh, Provide a little context. Yeah, like let's say if a beaver was one ton, like a Sherman tank beavers? or uh, the sk- oh. the Scylla from Ancient Myth. Mm. You guys start looking up. Look up the things that are fifty-seven <laughs> tons. All right. Uh, so, out of the whole length of the whale, how much do you guys think, um, percentage-wise, is the whale's head? With the uh, sperm whale specifically. Yeah. You're talking uh, about of weight. There's a lot of shit up no, there. Just the length. Um, oh, if it's, the length. Yeah. For the length of the whale, how like how much percentage wise does the head make up of the entire length? Percentage, not fraction. You can do a fraction. Thirty thirty eight percent. Brown, what'd you say? I'm gonna say sixty five percent. Zach, do you got any guess on here? I'm gonna say sixty nine. Ooh, uh, you all went over. It is a quarter to a third, so 25 to 33.3333333. Yeah. Uh, for teeth, weapons, all sorry, right, just, just for Just for reference, Sherman Tank is 30 yeah. tons. So 30 tons. This weighs about two Sherman Tanks. I actually found Sherman a really tank. cool site called The Measure of Things, not a sponsor, but you can actually type in something like 57 tons and it tells you in context about how heavy that is compared to things. So it's about half as heavy as a blue whale. It's about, oh. well, that's a What's stupid, that site? Uh, the Measure of Things. The Measure of Things. Got it. It's about four and a half times as heavy as the anchor of a cruise ship. It's eight times as heavy as a Tyrannosaurus Rex. 
Wow. Eight and a half times as heavy as an elephant. It's about one tenth. Okay, okay. It's about one tenth as heavy as Christ the Redeemer. In parentheses, the <laughs> statue. <laughs> Good to know. Uh, oh, that's a really heavy statue. That is. For whales, one tenth. Dude, some of there. these get ridiculous. <laughs> the space shuttle right. is seventy-eight tons. Dang. It's 300,000 times as heavy as a billiard ball. Mm. Which I is, can't even fathom which is, that. Which is the same exact amount of hamsters. 300,000 hamsters. Good. We are <laughs> Wait, off is the rails. a billiard rails. ball way the same as a... It does not weigh as much as a hamster. <laughs> that's hamsters what I was way thinking. lighter than that. I know. Hamsters, you can just chuck them. Yeah. You just, yeah that's great. Here's one that uh, so this, one, this, one, this one will help. It's 7.5 million human eyes. So just think of like how many like how many human eyes you can fit in a jar, and then multiply until you get to seven point five million, and then you'll have like the weight. Good. Minus the jars, obviously. Here's another one for you guys to figure out. Uh, They have eighteen to twenty six teeth, all in the lower jaw, which fit into slots on the upper jaw when they're closed, and each tooth weighs two point two pounds. So, context, Kyle. Yeah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> as much as uh, a hamster, uh, sure, a really, really fat, big hamster. Uh, so now, you guys, I know you've been wondering what on earth do such large whales eat? So they eat giant squid, colossal squid, octopus, demersal rays, medium, and their main staple of medium-sized squid. Their brain weighs 17 pounds. It's the largest brain of any mammal. They live for 70 plus years. Mm -mm. No, no, no. no. Moby Dick clearly was, what, like 1,000 or 1,500 years old? Yeah, he was. Right. Uh, After giving birth, I thought this was super interesting. Um, The milk from the cow is 36% fat. So that would put it at a consistency of like a cottage cheese. <laughs> so it, um, so the baby can eat it and it doesn't dissolve in the water. Huh. That's disgusting. And the main, uh, it's crazy. Uh, the main predator of the is the orca. So killer whales will hunt them in packs. And here's some fun stuff for you. While Moby Dick was fictional, this. Um, there was a whale that some people say it was based off of called Mocha Dick. Um, I'm not making that up. It's an <laughs> albino sperm whale that lived in the Pacific Ocean. It was encountered frequently near the island of Mocha in the 1800s. Unfortunately, Mocha Dick was killed in 1838. He was 70, 70 feet long and had 19 harpoons in him. Now, there was also rumor that somebody saw a mocha dick 10 <laughs> years later, so who knows what's going on. <laughs> you guys holding it together. It's really hard to talk about. Um, so the anyway, name, The name is just real stupid. It is. It's, it is. <laughs> um, so one of the names of the submarines in the movie we watched was the Essex, and there was actually a situation with a ship called the X Essex. So while on a whaling mission out of Nantucket, uh, Massachusetts, a uh, group of people were trying to kill a sperm whale, and the whale fought back and sunk the ship. Wow. Which is pretty impressive. And this got, like, I thought, oh, okay, you know, that's, that's kind of crazy. This ended up getting pretty hardcore. Uh, because the survivors were extremely far away from the mainland and they had to live on their own for like, I think it was three months before they were rescued. They had to end up eating dead crew members and overall they ate seven of their crew members and eight people survived. Wow. Sounds like a Tuesday. Some pretty hardcore stuff. Yeah. It's Ooh. something else, man. And so that hopefully is that doesn't whales. happen to us. That is whales worldwide. I think uh, who who would we eat first if it came to it? Mustard man. Yeah. 
He can't defend himself. He's yeah. not here. That's true. And he, he won't listen to this either. So. <laughs> he won't expect it. <laughs> like, hey, you want to play a game of backgammon? Oh, my God. <laughs> backgammon. <laughs> well, obviously, that's the only game you bring when you're on a whaling expedition. Yeah. Obviously. All right, Brian, you got something for us? Yes. Tube three ready to fire, sir. <laughs> Commence the countdown. <laughs> Give it to, to me. me. Give it to me. Love that. So if uh, anyone's still here after uh, us talking about weight of everything and Kyle talking about <laughs> chocolate dicks over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone's tuned out by now. <laughs> and, uh, All right, I've had enough of this save shit. Save us for the end where no one's even listening. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. So uh, at work, actually, uh, this is gonna this got to be a this is gonna be a hard working countdown for us tonight. I'm sorry, it's it's a long episode. Just just bear with me. I got to get some practice in here. Hard working episode. I'm I'm starting to interview people at work in my position. I need some practice interviewing. Uh, so I figured tonight would be a great time. You know, I can come in with some high energy and get some practice interviewing people. I'm gonna practice with you guys <laughs> and. It still obviously has to be a countdown, uh, and you know we're we're running out of uh, we're running out of episodes here. Who knows how many are left? Maybe twenty, twenty five more movies for us to watch, and 50, nobody really 60. knows a whole lot. What do you say? 50, say? 60, 70, 80, 100 episodes, something like that left. <laughs> yeah. who, who knows? But uh, nobody's really heard anything about us. You know, uh, they hear you know a little bit of a joke here and there, but uh, this will uh, maybe peel back a few layers of the onion, and all of this is going to be juxtaposed against fun facts about ambient electronica musician Moby. Nice. Mm-hmm. I call this Moby and the Dicks. Oh, Moby oh. and the Dicks. Dun, dun, oh. dun, 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 dun. Moby Something like that. Yeah. yeah. It's good. It's good. Number guys. four. Moby, destined for creativity. Moby's great grandmother taught classical composition. His grandmother was a painter. His mom was a painter. His uncle was a sculptor. His uncle, another uncle, was a photographer. And two of his aunts were writers. And get this, he is the great, great, great grandnephew of Herman Melville, who wrote Moby Dick. And that is how he chose the name Moby. He was destined for creativity. What about you guys? Did any of you follow a family vocation or maybe even the opposite and broke off after a, a legacy of... I don't know, serving in the military or running the family business. Anybody have any interesting stories to tell? Not I. My my dad worked at uh, Wright Patterson Air Force Base and then bought his own business, so it's not like it was a family business. My mom works in education, but not in a way that I do. Um, and then uh, you know, grandparents were you know, not that. Jamie, uh, come from a family of scientists, old. maybe? Well, see, it's funny because on my dad's side, they're mostly artists other than my dad. So I get, there's like uh, one who's a theater, uh, who runs a theater, and another one who's a musician, or two of them that were musicians. So his brothers were all in the arts, um, but he kind of broke off from that. And then, uh, yeah, well, there's some engineers and stuff like that on my mom's side. So like my uncle is an engineer, and then... My grandfather was like a machinist in the um, steel mm-hmm. mills of Pennsylvania. So maybe got the analytical mind from your mom's side of the family. Maybe I think that may have been it. Yeah, and then my obviously improv skills and creativity from my dad's side. Kyle, are you uh, planning to be a uh, pastor? I am not, but <laughs> my father and uh, brother, my oldest brother, both are, and that is like new in terms of things in my family. My grandfather before that was an entrepreneur, owned a lot of different businesses. And my grandfather on the other side was a engineer and his wife was a teacher and my mom was also a teacher. So I have not done any of those things. Yeah, broke broke from the mold a little bit. Just and podcast well. for life. <laughs> podcast for life. Wait, so your grandfather my, wasn't a podcaster? 
Uh, my great 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 grandfather was. Whoa! Interesting. My uh, actually that, that raises the point. My great grandfather actually invented the triangular sort of three prong radio antenna tower. Wow! Broadcasting. My my this guy. Really? I didn't even think of any of this. My brother actually went to broadcasting school. What? And here, and here I am. And didn't does he even, do broadcasting at all? No, he he uh, he did it to uh, do like dispatching. Um, he uh, served in the military and wanted to do sort of like police dispatching and stuff like that, but didn't didn't end up going down that road. And he's uh, actually a postman. Oh, Newman. A lot of uh, serving in the military on our on our side of the family. I'm actually uh, first in family to graduate from a four year school and and go that path. I did not serve in the military, but I have I have fun talking about submariners on a weekly podcast. Oh, yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like it. Number three, Moby was in a punk band, Flipper, and the punk band Vatican Commandos back in the 80s. Does anyone have any stories of their time in a music group or a school band when they were younger? Ooh, man, how much time you got? <laughs> uh, we got an hour 20. Yeah, I know. Uh, I was in two bands. Uh, I was in them both for, you know... First one with my brother and a couple guys from high school. One went to a rival high school, and we were in a band called Strength in Numbers out of Michigan. And I did that when I was 14 to 18. And then after that, I. Did you win any left Battle them. of the Bands? I did. I won a battle of the bands with my new band versus the guys from my old band um, in our town. And during that time, it was pretty nuts because in the middle of our set, um, somebody came over. They ran over and stopped us because a guy was having a heart attack, one of the judges, and he ended up going into a coma and passing away. Oh, jeez. And the last thing he heard was our music, so I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what to how think about I that. Feel about that, and how he felt about that. But we ended up winning. I don't know if they were like these guys are going to be scarred for life or what the deal was. But very fun time. Kyle, as they say, a win's a win. <laughs> wow. No he matter did. what it takes, he died doing what he loved. <laughs> Judging battle judging of the bands. Judging local bands. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Number two, Moby's most prized possession is purported to be a drawing of Homer Simpson's head signed by Matt Groening. My question for you guys. Graining. Graining. I, that's what I thought it was, but I didn't want to sound like an asshat. My question for you <laughs> is, does anyone have a prized relic or artifact they are really proud of? Uh, I do. I guess I can go again. I took a week off of school in college to go to my favorite band, Coheed and Cambria. They were having a four-day concert called the Never Ender Tour where they played every single album they had. They had four at that time from start to finish in consecutive nights. I got I bought VIP tickets, saved up what I could and did that. And I got a autographed poster from every member of the band, and um, my wife is actually going to get it framed for me. So that's that, cool. You also I love that thing. Don't you also have that sign, like a signed Danny Glover picture? <laughs> oh yeah, I I do have a, a photo on my on my shelf downstairs of Danny Glover uh, that I autographed myself mm. and. Um, <laughs> I just, it's funny because people have come over and they're like, did Danny Glover really sign this? They're like, yeah. Is, is that, did you sign it, your name or his name, Kyle? I can't remember. <laughs> I, it's like pals for the number four ever DG. <laughs> I love that. Right. <laughs> Anybody else have anything on that? I don't think so. I've got so. a signed yeah. picture of uh, Mankind, the wrestler. Oh, that's kind of cool. I met him at the Piqua Mall, Ben. <laughs> him and um, him and Al Snow were down there doing autographs, and my dad took me, and I got an autograph of Al Snow, who's from Lima, Ohio, and then Mankind, McFoley. Say, yeah, so, yeah. Would you say that's your most prized possession? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> no. If I sat here and thought about something, but that's the first thing that came to my head. 
I used to so have. It's got to be it. It's got to yeah. be it. I used to have a uh, a draft of Rick James's autobiography that he wrote, um, because he had wrote this autobiography to potentially be made into a film starring Dave Chappelle, uh, and the director Michelle Gondry got it because he was like in talks to potentially direct it, and I don't think it even was ever published. But I had like the autobiography, and it was effing crazy. That's so really that was kind of cool. cool. That yeah. is really cool. How did you get that? My brother worked for Michelle Gondry. Oh. Yeah. So it's kind of crazy. Now I think about it, that, that's a pretty cool thing to have, I guess. Yeah. It's like that Wu-Tang album that only that uh, billionaire big yeah. pharma kid has. Yeah. I may be only like a handful. I may be one of like a handful of people who've ever read it. Yeah. That's cool. And now he's dead. So. There you go. Time to publish. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Last one here, guys. Moby's mother died of cancer in 1998. In response, Moby drank himself into a stupor, passed out, and slept through her funeral. My question, have any of you guys slept through your mother's funeral? <laughs> nope. Nope. Not yet. All right. <laughs> All right. That was a joke one anyway, so uh, we'll keep it moving. Zach Facts, go, go, go. no, no, no. Play the do, 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 do. <laughs> Zach Facts, it's Zach Facts. When you're going down, get some Zach Facts when you're going down. <laughs> oh, I left myself. Did you really right. that stupid thing would stick with you this long? <laughs> I'm, yeah. Yeah, I definitely knew that that was being used this entire time. As, um, I, as I mentioned earlier, I'm, I'm listening through all the episodes again, and one of the things I am tracking is how often Zach laughs at himself. <laughs> <laughs> The funniest guy I know. All right. So we got a movie about whales. <laughs> that was this. What is this? <laughs> Jesus. All right. There it is. Okay. <laughs> Um, so we watched, you know, the movie, 2010 Moby Dick. Forgot Jesus, for a I, thought you, I thought you dropped out for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't have been terrible timing. So today's Zach Facts is a brand new Zach Facts that's not even facts at all, but the only fact that you get is that we've got some whale jokes, ladies and gentlemen. So let's start going through some of these spectacular whale jokes that are in fact real. All right. Sounds Sorry. good. I muted myself. My bad. Um, <laughs> cut that. All right. Uh, ben, what yeah. is a whale's favorite story? Uh, whale tale. No. The humpback of Notre Dame. Nice. Oh. oh there it is. Kyle. Um, yeah. Kyle, what is an orca's favorite TV show? A time Wrong. to kill. <laughs> Whale of Fortune. Oh, oh, shoot. Jamie. Yep. What do you call a 100-year-old whale? Uh, Methuselah whale. A hunchback whale. Oh. Cause, oh. Wait, is hunchback, like, I guess, yeah, associated with old people? Sure. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> ben, what do whales yes. like to chew? Uh, I don't know. Slim Jim. Blubber gum. Ah. Oh, nice. <laughs> Kyle. Yeah. We already went over this, but it was the wrong information. And here's the fact. Why are they called sperm whales? <laughs> because they jizz buckets. <laughs> because semen discovered them. Nice. Oh. Oh. I like that one a lot. That's a, that's a dad that's, joke. That's classy. Jamie, yep. how does a group of whales make a decision? Uh, I don't know. Flipper coin. Oh, that's not. It's a dolphin. <laughs> and the last one, Ben. What is a blue whale's favorite James Bond film? I don't know what. License to Krill. Nice. <laughs> and that's the Zach Fax, ladies there and gentlemen. It is. Wow. I enjoyed that good. immensely. That's Great. it. Great work. 
Good job, guys. Thanks for letting me uh, practice interviewing. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening. Thanks for listening to Submersion. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Don't forget to subscribe for new episodes every Thursday. If you like what you heard, please leave us a rating on iTunes. 